most compassionate, most merciful. And I send salutations on Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was mercy to mankind, not just to Muslims. And thirdly, I congratulate here all of you for gathering here today to show the hurt that you feel and I thank those of other faiths that have joined us here today to express their support for the cause that we have here today for and also to argue the case for reviewing our understanding of freedom of expression. Why are Muslims so hurt today? Why are we seeing this discord around the world? Is because as Muslims we hold our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the highest regard. His status is that only after God Almighty Himself. He is not a deity, but He is our connection to the deity. He brought the word of God to us. He explained this word to us. He left an example for us to follow, not just simply to admire, but to emulate. He was one who spent nights crying for the salvation of his followers and those that were to come afterwards. We remain infinitely indebted to him and we take our cue from his close companions who were ready to sacrifice life and limb for him. Who would not want that he should receive even the slightest bit of pain while they should rest at home. We too feel that we cannot rest if someone is under the pretext of freedom of speech is insulting our beloved Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For me, this is not an argument or a clash between freedom of expression and a restriction of expression. For indeed, the Holy Quran, it challenges other people. It engages the intellect. It addresses the people and says, do you not ponder? Do you not understand? It engages the intellect and it challenges for debate. It does not curtail expression, but it does so in a manner that is civil. It does so in a manner so not as to insult and hurt the feelings of the other adversary, even if it disagrees with that adversary. The Quran tells us, وَلَا تَسُبُّ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ The greatest challenge for the Quran is to establish the belief in one God. Yet those who believe in more than one God, the Holy Quran advises us as Muslims, do not speak ill of their gods, even if you disagree with their gods. In fact, the Quran tells us, do not stoop low as, the, as your adversary and do not lower yourself to their level. لا يحب الله الجهر بالسوء من القول إلا من ظلم. Allah does not like that you should bring upon your tongues evil talk. So, as Muslims, as Muslims, we affirm the sacred right of freedom of speech. But we argue that this is not without boundary, it is not without restriction. Nowhere in the world is freedom of speech without restriction. Even for those countries and those people that argue that it is. It is not in America, despite the most liberal laws they have, you still have, you still have laws against libel, you still have laws against defamation, which shows that there is some restriction 
on the absolute sense of freedom of speech. Earlier this month, we had the horrendous slaughter of two policewomen in Manchester, rightly condemned throughout. And then we had someone in Liverpool praising the unfortunate person who committed this heinous act, praising that person's action, and he was promptly in, he was taken into custody. We recognize that's something we hold dear. There have to be limits on freedom of speech with regards to that. This is not a rejection of freedom of speech. This is framing this argument in a different frame. This is a challenge and a clash between the freedom to insult and to be free from insult. I say to you, any city, any town, any group, any family that upholds this freedom to insult as an ideal and practices that within their society, within their group, can only fail and can only succeed in destroying themselves. Where does a society that holds the ideal of being free from insult will prosper? It will create favorable links across communities. And that is the precept and that is the instruction of Islam and the Holy Quran. I thank you here, all of you, for coming here today. And for those that are not from the Islamic faith, for standing by our side in this hour that we are hurting very deep inside. Thank you very much. I think as the comment, the final comment there, well, this is not just about Muslims. Uh, this is all about no to religious hatred. And our brothers from other faiths, in particular uh, the Sikh community, have been very supportive of the Muslims in Bradford for many years. And in this particular moment of time, moment of need, uh, the Sikh community have stood beside us and said that we're with you. So I'd like for a couple of minutes, please, to invite the president of Guru Gobind Singh on Leeds Road, the temple, uh, Kuldeep Singh, the president, to come and say a few words during our time. Thank you. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Um, as my brother just said, we're from the Guru Gobind Singh Temple. We're here to show support and solidarity in this insult against Islam. Any insult against Islam is insult against religion, and I wish we all stand together and united. As our brother said previously, pro peaceful process is our only way forward. The darkness is doing its best to incite hatred and hurt inside ourselves. If we give it the power of God, the power of love, we can overcome it. So please, brothers and sisters, if we can keep protesting in peace, in unity, we can overcome the darkness. So I would just like to say to all of us, just keep doing what we're doing and we will overcome this. Thank you very much.